And so as we turn then to 2 Corinthians 3, um, Paul uh, is making some comments in that passage, but Voss points out just the character of this section of Scripture and uh, and the, the uh, we might say, pronounced polemical strain. And he even compares it in, in, uh, in one case to Galatians. So what's on Paul's mind here, Danny? Uh, what, is, what is Voss pointing out and why does he start things at that point? What does that have to do with the whole sermon? Yeah, um, man, I can't, I mean, this, the, the sermon is so extraordinary, I almost can't contain myself, uh, but, but Voss, um, Voss is saying here at the beginning uh, that, um, that when Paul is writing to the Corinthians, there's an issue going on, and the issue is that his enemies are attacking him because he's preaching a Christ that doesn't fit their conception of what the Christ should be. And so then it becomes a question of, of, of uh, what they think the Christ can be on the one hand, but also on the other hand, uh, uh, Voss is making a, a pedagogical point about all, uh, he's making a pedagogical point about uh, your conception of the Christ you have will impact the theology that flows from it, or in this case, the salvation that's found in Christ that flows from it. And so he's he's saying that this differs from the uh, issue at Galatia, in Galatians because in Galatians is a question of of salva- where the, how does the law relate to salvation? But this is more a question of what is the nature of the Christ in the hangup that they were having was that they could not get beyond the institutions of the old covenant. They couldn't get beyond the palpable, uh, tangible uh, glory of of what they would see with their eyes. And now they're being confronted with a heavenly, an invisible, a glory that couldn't be touched. And, and, And to them, this was weak. And this was contrary to everything that they hoped for. And it, it, and to them, Paul was preaching a different gospel. And um, it really, uh, to them, was uh, uh, something that they were going to fight. Now, um, uh, when I read this, my mind actually goes to a passage that, that Lane's been preaching on a lot in the past year, and that's Hebrews chapter 12, in that you almost have in Hebrews chapter 12, laid out what Paul is arguing for them here in second Corinthians, that the, uh, the more fearful, the more exalted thing, uh, mountain is the one you can't touch, uh, that the, the, the greater fire, uh, and, uh, the more fearful. And, uh, so it, it, that and to for Foss to be able to communicate this within basically a page and a half, it sets the whole, uh, redemptive historical scene, in a way that just gets right to the point and also it sets up the the uh polemical aspects of the sermon i'm rambling here but i I will just i'll lay my cards on the table right at the beginning um this is the greatest pedagogical sermon that i've ever read because it takes you through how you are to interpret and interpret the old covenant how you're to interpret Uh, Paul in the new covenant. And yet at the end of the day, what you're left with is not thinking, Oh, I learned something here. It is the, uh, the greatest pedagogical sermon that makes you totally uh, 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 with the thought, my only hope is Jesus Christ. And that everything he's pointing to in that interpretation of the old, everything he's pointing to in the fulfillment in Paul points to Jesus Christ being the believer's soul hope, and that's what he's going to preach. And so the question is, as he opens this letter to the, to the Corinthians, he's, I mean, I mean, what Paul said, or what Voss is saying is this is what Paul is doing. He is bracketing the history of redemption, but yet he's focusing in on Jesus Christ being the pivot and center point. And in that sense, uh, it is a, a slightly different argument from what you get in the other Pauline letters. And that's the wonderful thing about what Voss is doing in regard to unity and diversity in that Galatians is different from uh, from Corinthians. So it's just, we don't level them out and make them all by just say, 
quote, you know, all about justification by faith. You deal with each one as they point to the person or work of Christ and what it means to that particular situation in that, that particular audience. You know what struck me, Danny, uh, in Camden was that um, in the Galatian corpus, the argument is about the relationship of justification to the law, among other things. But the level of persecution that Paul faced in this letter, the, the super apostles that were persecuting him, really have a way of bringing Paul face to face with what is most vital and life-giving and central to his apostolic Christian identity. And it's, I don't think it's an accident that when everything is challenged, when Paul's credentials, Paul's character, Paul's gospel is called into question, what does he do? He steps back and focuses attention on the exalted life-giving spirit of Jesus Christ, crucified, raised, and ascended. And uh, so, so that by the time you work through the whole of 2 Corinthians, what are you left with? You're left with the, the, the substance of Paul's hope, which in a word is Christ. And it's, it's, it is, uh, I do think, Danny, your point about the pedagogy of the sermon— I think you're uh, dead on here. 